Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Extra Mile, and we are cold opening not for a tragic event, but for a momentous occasion that has taken place in the D.C. area, or rather in the Houston, Texas area, that has reverberated to the nation's capital. Ladies and gentlemen, the Washington Nationals are the World Series Champions! And as always, this is the fastest show on IE Sports Radio. This is the Extra Mile. My name is Daryl Kinsey Jr. Caitlin Seam and Michael Ward are my co-hosts for this evening. We're going to talk plenty of racing in Texas as well as a story in IndyCar that's kind of got us upset involving one of the fan favorite drivers, but I just had to get the last little bit of Nationals hysteria out of my system. They won the World Series Finally, the Nationals are champions of baseball. And I couldn't be more proud of a team that was 19 and 31 in May and stands above the baseball world. Michael, Caitlin, thank you for joining me this evening and just wow. When you keep on fighting. Oh, jeez. Michael, that high note is not for you. <laughs> Especially on reverb. <laughs> I hit good. Congratulations, everybody who is a Nationals fan. Woo! We are so excited in this town. Um, It was an epic downpour of rain yesterday based all night in dc and people were partying like it was 72 and sunny like i think i think that may have even been bigger than when the caps won as far as party and post-game hysteria i can believe that yep. exciting stuff yeah cannot believe that they were the only team in the history of baseball or history of professional sports in America to go four round or to to win all four games of a seven game series on the road absolutely incredible stuff and congratulations again to the Washington Nationals we're going to get into the show this evening because we have a Texas two step to talk about and that is going to be NASCAR and Formula One deep in the heart of Texas. And I'm going to stop singing because I'm not paid to sing. Formula One U.S. Grand Prix and the second round of the round of eight in the NASCAR playoffs, both happening in Texas. And I was talking to Matthew Owens of USRN this morning, and Eddie Gossage was on the radio with MRN. He was upset that Formula One decided to schedule the race the same weekend as the NASCAR race. Matthew's reporting that allegedly Eddie Gossage believes that Coda scheduled the race against his race in Texas on purpose. Sure. A couple of problems with that. Um, Coda doesn't make the schedule. F1 makes the schedule. And why would Formula One care exactly what NASCAR's schedule for that weekend is? Like, really? I, I don't know, because they think for some reason that it's all going to come collapsing down. Like he acts like he basically chastised Coda and said, 
F1 doesn't care about their fans or NASCAR fans. Of course, they're not going to care about NASCAR fans. They're not. They don't run NASCAR. I feel like to that they're going to respond NASCAR. Who, honestly? Yeah, I'm like who are you? Basically, have we all seen Endgame by now? Of yes. course, I've seen Endgame by now. Okay, so remember the scene when Thanos, and by the way, spoilers, but then again, the movie came out in May, it's October, you should have seen it by now. It's on DVD right now, you should have seen it. Um, Remember the scene when Scarlet Witch shows up to fight Thanos, and she's like, you took everything from me, and Thanos is standing there like, I don't even know who you are. Formula One is Thanos. Eddie Gossage is Scarlet Witch in this situation. He's really mad that he thinks they're going to take the ticket sales away from him. While Formula One barely understands they exist. And by the way, go look at the ticket prices for Coda. I don't think they're stealing many NASCAR fans away. In fact, let's do that. Because I love doing this this time of year. I think we've done it two years in a row. We're going to do it for uh, the third year. How much are prices for the Formula One U.S. Grand Prix? We're going to take a look at it on StubHub.com. Actually, this is a secondary seller. and looks like there are some people actually selling their tickets for... About hundred, not fr- well from one hundred ninety-five dollars. Let's actually click on this and see what it is. It's for the, the three-day pass, by the way. So not bad on the resale market, where you got tickets right up four seventy-five to sit near turn five. Um, you wonder how much front stretch tickets are for three days. Guys. Oh, we were supposed to actually guess a number? Yeah. So I want you guys to guess what a main grandstand lower level three day pass will get you, how much that one costs off a of stub hub. For the F one race, right? Yes. For the Coda weekend. Um, yeah. For an all day weekend pass. Yes. 150. Higher. 350. Higher. 550? Higher. You're not even close. <laughs> 1100? Lower. 995. $1,045. It costs over $1,000 to get a three-day weekend pass to the Formula One race. For the main grandstand lower level section 110, it costs $1,045. Yeah, see, Formula One shouldn't give a shit about NASCAR fans because no NASCAR fan can afford that. (laughs) Kaylin, that's a horrible thing to say. (laughs) It's horrible, but it's accurate. But... Jeez. Nobody ever said my truths were gentle. I mean, look at if Ow. you look if you look at the NASCAR fan base and they're mainly blue collar working class Americans, they're not going to be able to f- afford a thousand dollars per ticket. And that's on StubHub. I'm going to bring up the actual website. And we'll do it from there this time. Because remember, StubHub, sites like StubHub, you can usually get your tickets for a a discount. So this is for the Formula One Emirates United States Grand Prix. I'm going to bring this up. Where can I get my tickets? So we're going to go to the tickets link. This is actually a very well put together site, by the way. I think my, um, my graphic, my, uh, coding teacher would actually like this website so the three day passes are sold out uh, three day flex passes and the Haas F1 fan experience is sold out we're looking for the 
Three day premium grandstand seats. We're gonna do those first. We're gonna see if they got some prices here. So we're going to go okay. I want you guys to guess what the track side ticket price is for the front stretch. I don't know what this means. Or what's the difference between track side so is so it's in it's tiered by level so track side is the lowest level club level is the highest level so this track is for the three day weekend pass again yes this is a three day weekend pass lower actually michael's turn to guess michael you're up i was just gonna, i was just gonna let caitlin do all of this but uh, six fifty-five. L- lower, but Michael was closest. Track side on the front stretch, five hundred and ninety-five dollars a ticket, and that sold out somehow. That's expensive. The lower level ticket that we saw on StubHub is actually less here on that website, six hundred ninety-five dollars. The mezzanine section is 1,000, which is the 200 level seats, $1,095 a ticket. Eddie, I'm a level with you. I don't think F1's going to steal many fans from you. I mean, to, to sit in the decent grandstands, your entry fee is four hundred and fifty five dollars to sit in try to get this to scroll. Four hundred and fifty five dollars to sit in turn fifteen or the turn one grandstand. All of those tickets are sold out. So if you wanted to sit in the actual grandstands, you're out of luck. For the bleachers, and I'm just gonna tell you these prices as soon as I can get it up. And, and, and the point is just to go to say, this is just to further Who's illustrate. It up? Funny, <laughs> I'm trying to get this screen up. Ah, oh, Jesus, Kayla. <laughs> this just further illustrates the divide between other forms of motorsport and Formula One. So your lowest seated ticket price, like the regular bleacher stands which are in turns 4, 9, and 12. Turn 4 tickets, $2.95 a pop. Somehow sold out. Turn 9 bleachers, also $2.95 a pop. You could still get a ticket over there right now. The turn 12 bleachers, all sold out. Lower level, $3.45 a ticket. Upper level, $3.95 a level. I mean, a ticket. This is not an inexpensive motorsport to attend. So if the three of us wanted to go, we would have to figure out $1,200. And that's before we stepped on the property to deal with the concession prices. And transportation and housing. Yeah. And parking at the racetracks. I don't even know if they do unpaid parking. They better not do paid parking. I would fight somebody if they had paid parking. But anyway, I I, I do this exercise just to say every year, because Eddie Gossage has done this every year since the Coda race has come out. And Brian, and I just saw Brian Stevens joining us. Welcome by Brian. Uh, He said, Caitlin speaking the truth only spent 160 on premium brickyard penthouse tickets. And we know what the attendance is what the attendance is like at the brickyard. So that's probably a steal compared to what it would be for the 500, but even sti- for the Indy 500, but even still fact of the matter is guys, F1's not really stealing from NASCAR and NASCAR's not stealing from F1. So Eddie, can we not do this exercise every time this race comes up, please? It'll probably happen next year. You know what? You're probably right. 
I mean, yeah. So let's continue. And before we get into the uh, race weekend, we had another bit of news. Guys, the 2021 rules have finally come out for Formula One. Yay! Kind of. And don't get too excited. We're going to explain to you why. So the World Motorsports Council, and this is from motorsport.com, voted unanimously on the new 2021 rules. As you know, not only do do the rules limit the amount of aerodynamic aids can be on the car and able to boost overtaking, there's also a budget cap of 175 million euros. That's actually, no, that's 175 million dollars that's supposed to be coming in. And the race calendar has been limited, or there'll be a limit for a 21 race calendar for the budget cap. And a million dollars will be added or subtracted from the cap depending on how many races are in the Formula One World Championship schedule. Now, The cost cap excludes driver costs, non-performance-based expenditures like marketing, and and the contracts of the three highest paid persons in the actual team. Now, all this sounds great, wonderful, and the new 2021 cars do look kind of sexy, not going to lie. However, we all know there's a butt coming. Caitlin, would you like to tell them what the butt is? It's not a cute butt. (laughs) (laughs) No, it is not. Ferrari is a bunch of wang dangers, and they can choose if they want to veto this handy dandy new rule system or not. So, basically, what that means for those of you that don't understand. Wang Danger? I can't explain that if we need to. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. We have been working on this rule package, I believe, for two years. With all the complaining and backbiting and sniping and consternation from the teams. We have finally got something together that is tangible and the fans would actually be on board with, possibly, if everything goes well. And I know Matt was Matt White was trying to temper expectations on Twitter this morning. But there's even something worse than whether or not very little change comes with these rules. Ferrari, if they don't get their way, can just decide, you know what? We're not doing this. Because back in the 90s slash early 2000s, when Ferrari was on another one of their we're going to leave stunts, which I'm pretty sure they do this once a rules generation, if we're lucky, Bernie Ecclestone had the bright idea to tell Ferrari, you know what? I want you to stay so badly, I'm going to give you a veto of any rules made by the FIA for the sport if you don't like them. He, oh, Bernie. he basically gave them a forget you, we're Ferrari card. This is at the New England Patriots during the off-season rules committee meetings. If all the owners voted for a rule and the Patriots said no, the rule doesn't come into effect. That is what Bernie Ecclestone gave Ferrari. He gave them effective control of the rule book. Thank the Lord they've used that benevolently, have, or who knows what type of rules changes they would make. Go ahead. Question. Mm-hmm. If he gave them that much power, how come they still lose to Mercedes every year? <laughs> That's a good question. You can literally bend the rules to your will and you still have not won a championship since Schumacher left. How do you pull this off? Never mind the fact that, Caitlin, they shouldn't have this in the first place. No, it's the stupidest thing ever. Like, why? (laughs) There's no sport ever 
where the sanctioning body gives any type of power in this regard to the rules Mm -hmm. anywhere literally anywhere so why they decided that ferrari needed this not quite sure but they're idiots and they should just veto the power for them to veto here's what i would do if i was ross braun i would tell ferrari we're taking away your veto if you don't like it there's the door and people are like, oh, Formula One won't survive without Ford. Formula One won't survive. I do not care. I do not care. The sport will survive without Ferrari. It will find a way. This cannot continue where one team has control over the entire rule book. This could put this is a dangerous precedent that we are lucky has not created a Ferrari eternal dynasty, if we're being honest. Because they could basically make the rules bend to their car. Like if they didn't want turbo hybrid engines, they could have vetoed it. We wouldn't have them right now. Many people would say that's a good thing, but that's not the point. If Right now, they don't like the budget cap. They could veto an entire rules package that has been worked on for two years just because they do not like something. I do not care for their tradition. I do not care that they have been here the entire sport. You don't get to control. It is bad enough they get paid by the FIA just for existing in the sport. Could you see how much better a place NASCAR would be if those teams are getting paid just to exist, Caitlin? I'd like to get paid just to exist. And they get a payment off the top of all the revenue on top of what they get in the points fund simply for existing. It's already too much they get that. And then you gave them a veto power over the rules. I'm sorry, Ferrari has too much power over this sport. And it needs to be checked. And if they want to act like babies, like they do every time they don't get their way and threaten to leave, you know what I'd do as Ross Braun? Bye. See you later. We'll figure it out without you. I'm still trying to figure out how they lose Mercedes every year. I don't get it either, Michael. And, like, I will push them in front of that bus. I will drive the bus. Because I, this cannot be allowed. One team cannot have full control over the rule book of your sport. This is a terrible precedent. And they are lucky that it has not gone terribly for them. In that Ferrari just made a whole bunch of rules that benefits them and no one else. Because they could have done that with this veto. And it needs to go away yesterday. So all that being said, let's get into the U.S. Grand Prix. And there's a reason we haven't really talked about the race in... It's simple. If you go over to Formula1.com and you check out what the championship scenarios are, um, it's simple. Botas doesn't win the race. Hamilton wins the championship. It is literally a Hamilton just has to finish the race situation to clinch his sixth title in the track that he loves a lot. Coda or the Circuit of the Americas, at the for the U.S. Grand Prix. Guys, it, it, I wish I could try to make this exciting. I wish I could tell the people there's a chance, but I'd just be lying at this point. And it's kind of sad. Yeah, it's not much uh, 
anybody can really do. Boras has to win, and any other scenario, Hamilton wins. Unless, like I, like I was saying before, you know, the warm up, I was saying Botas pretty much has to pull something out of his ass. Early season, Botas needs to come back, What's... or Hamilton needs to, or Hamilton wins. Well, it's not even that. Mid-season, Botas would have to come back, and Hamilton would have to have the mother of all bad luck. Because even if Botas wins every race to the end, and Hamilton finishes fifth all the way to the end, they're just going to tie, and Hamilton wins on the tiebreaker. So, there's not a lot that can be done, and I don't see Mercedes switching off the title to Botas at this point of the season. Yep. So, he's... So, if Ferrari can veto rule changes, why can't they just veto this, too, and be like, we don't agree? (laughs) Whatever rule system set up that we aren't winning, we don't agree. Um... They can veto any rule. So why didn't they figure this out so that they could win? I don't know. I think... (laughs) I think we're just lucky that the more benevolent Ferrari owners have been in charge. Because, like I said, this could go very badly. Could you see if Joe Gibbs Racing had this type of veto power? Oh, God. Why did you give them that power? any NASCAR team... Which, by the way, if Joe Gibbs Racing, since they run Toyotas, had this type of power, oh my goodness, the fan backlash. There would be no NASCAR if they did that. You think the fan backlash is is bad now against Toyota? Give a Toyota team unlimited veto power over the rules. Oh, boy. NASCAR fans will riot. Yeah. Um, will th- they, though? Yes. Yes. Out of everything that's happened. Yes. Yes. Caitlin. Are we talking about a baby riot or like a, uh, a riot? riot? No, a riot riot. Like... Daytona will be in flames. Caitlin. Will we... it though? I think Kate... Daytona's too wet to set on fire. Well. I want to depend... start with something in dry heat like Phoenix. Well, depends on the time of year. But we still have people making posts about Toyota's involvement in the production of Japanese airplanes during World War II. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about Mitsubishi, though. Anyway. Does, but I don't think a riot qualifies with complaining really loudly. It's not like you can riot by yelling through Reddit aggressively. No, I, I think this would transform into an actual riot. But I... Maybe we should give this a shot, then. Not you know, you know nah. I've been hearing these rumors i don't know if we're on the nascar segment yet but it's like i've been hearing this rumor that uh, uh honda, save, save that honda. S- save that because i want to talk about that okay i want to talk about that when we get to the nascar section because this is this is starting to become something that i thought the sport was heading towards anyway with how the sedan classes is classes is oh my goodness classes are shaping up in the automotive world but We're going to talk about that on the other side of this break. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to have an IndyCar conversation because something's going on with the mayor of Hinchtown, and it's something that a lot of people are not going to like. We'll talk about it on the other side of this break here on the Extra Mile on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Hi everybody, it's Calvin here from USRN here to give you an important message. Since 2017, we have done our absolute best to provide you with nothing but the highest quality of sports calls in the greatest of quantity possible. Thanks to you, our station has grown more than we ever thought. That's why, with your help, we would like to grow even further. Just think, twice the amount of your favorite calls, 24 hours of coverage, talk shows, play-by-play, game-by-game analysis, and so much more. That's right, USRN2 is officially in development. But we can't do it alone. We have set up a GoFundMe page that you can access from our homepage on the left of your screen. We also are planning special giveaways and prizes to our highest owners. Our goal here at USRN is to bring you the best calls possible at no cost to you. In order to continue to do that, we need your help now. Please check out our GoFundMe page, and if you would like to know how you can help, you can email usrnradio at gmail.com. Without your support, we couldn't do what we do. Hey, all my NBA 
basketball fans out there, tired of hearing about just the dramatic stuff in the basketball world, tired of hearing about what such and such is war tonight, and not about the game? Hey, leave all of that alone. Because on Wednesday night, I got this show called Fast Break with Bill Jones here on the IE Sports Radio. And all we talk about is straight basketball. From where it comes down to the NBA, the NCAA, and even the WNBA. I don't discriminate. I give all my NBA, my basketball, whatever you want with sports. To the slam dunk, to the three-pointer, to the teardrop, to the game winners. I'm there. I'm speaking about it. I have a debate, I have my panel, I got a squad that rolls in, and we're going to be talking mad sports, we're going to be talking about the Lakers, we're going to be talking about even the Brooklyn Nets, we're going to be talking about who's the top team out there in the NBA, so, tie all the drama, tie all the, what he wear today, what kind of shoes he had, get all that, just come over, Fast Break with Phil Jones here on Ice Sports Radio every Wednesday night at 8 Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time, y'all. So, yo, tune in. So I was debating on whether or not we we're going to come back to Baby Shark, but I'm not sure we have to go ahead to do that, so I did not. Anyway, welcome back to the Extra Mile here on iSports Radio. Your feed for all that is sports. Daryl, Daryl, Caitlin, and Michael with you this evening. I'm still coming down from post-Nationals World Series hysteria, as you can tell. And we're going to talk IndyCar for a little bit before we get into NASCAR, because... Unfortunately, guys, our, I don't know if he's our second favorite Canadian driver, current Canadian driver, or 1B Canadian driver, or however you want to look at it. James Hinchcliffe lost his ride, basically, with McLaren SPM when it was announced that The last two champions of Indy Lights, Patrico O'Ward, who had a great rookie season, by the way, and Oliver Askew, this year's champion, will be running with McLaren SPM during the 2020 season. That puts James Hinchcliffe out of a ride. The only problem is, and Caitlin can further attest to this, James had no other plans going into next season other than racing with SPM. Yes, I can confirm this. Yes. So because Caitlin, I know Hinchcliffe. So Caitlin, Caitlin actually shared the the um, image that was, was posted post. posted to social media. This is James's statement on the matter and uh caitlin you want to go ahead and read that for us if you got that pulled up absolutely okay. do i need to do a hinchcliffe voice or can i just do my own voice you can just do it normal <laughs> i kind of want to hear this i haven't tried it so i'll just do my own i'll add a couple a's in there they'll make it canadian <laughs> it goes without saying the happenings of the last 48 hours have been difficult eh? We were shocked to learn we would not be in the number five car for the 2020 season. Obviously, it's very late in the game, but my team is working flat out to try and salvage a full 2020 IndyCar campaign. The support from the motorsports community has been overwhelming and is 
is endlessly appreciated. We only get to do what we do because of the fans, and your passion is amazing. Disappointment aside, I still have my health, incredible family, friends, and fans supporting me. And at the end of the day, there's not much a little maple syrup and a Leafs game can't fix. Eh? <laughs> We've been kicked down before and came back stronger. This is simply our next fight. Challenge accepted. Hinch. Eh? <laughs> So All this is my own. <laughs> oh my so God. The, the basics and a lot. There was a lot of blowback from drivers when it came out that Hinchcliffe is not going to be driving next season, and it basically came down to it's late in the day to try to find a ride for twenty twenty. It's November. The season starts. Or no, well, it's basically November. Tomorrow's November. If you're listening to this live, season starts in March. Testing begins soon. Uh, preseason testing for next season begins soon. They have to scramble to try to find even a decent ride at this point. And that statement reads as if he is no longer under contract with Honda anymore. So he doesn't even have that going for him. Unless I'm reading into that statement wrong, is that what he's basically saying? I feel like he is open for business. Yeah. In non-dirty ways. So, Maybe dirty ways, too. Oh, goodness. So, so this is what Graham had to say. Graham Rahal had to say. This was yesterday. Gut-wrenching, but you had a contract with him. When does a contract mean a contract? We see this in other major stick and ball sports, but it's maddening to see it in our world. A contract is firm, and sadly these days doesn't mean much to a lot of people. Now, my thought was he probably didn't get the ride because they're moving to Chevy because McLaren thoroughly burned that bridge with Honda during the F1 days, and Hinch is under contract with Honda is where a lot of his backing came from. So I was under the impression he still had that money. Apparently he does not. He does not have a ride. Though it hasn't been confirmed that he doesn't have that money. Either way, he doesn't have a ride. You would think Honda would be scrambling to try to find him a ride somewhere. But this is frustrating if you're Hinch. Because you had a signed contract with the team. And all of a sudden it's like, well, we're going to take these new these two new kids and we're not going to even make a third car. So, um, bye. And then this brought up the question of Robert Wickens and they confirmed that Robert still has a seat whenever he wants one, but we don't even know if that's going to hold up at this. Well, I don't want to speak negatively about that, but are they going to make a third car for Wickens when and if he ever gets back in? But it's just a sad state of affairs with what's happening with the sport and it's maddening because Hinch is a fan favorite driver he's done everything right for the most part and he came back from almost dying at Indy sat on the pole there had terrible luck this season and now out of nowhere he ends up losing his ride I mean, and Michael, we've seen this happen in NASCAR a lot. We actually just yes. saw it happen recently with Matt DiBenedetto. You know, it hurts, but it's also, unfortunately, now just how business is done in the sport. Unfortunately, and you hate to see it happen to great drivers. Matt DiBenedetto had one of his best races this, I think, I think his whole career that time. Mm-hmm. And then that thing you know uh yeah we got to replace yeah uh, he's re- getting replaced yep, he's and, getting rep- you know it's you ha- you're hearing it now from james Hemsworth. he's just getting replaced and you know in formula one whew, people get replaced left right and center so it's just sad they see that's just becoming a staple in motorsports now yeah 
Well, my hope is that Hinchcliffe is on the grid come next season. But it's going to be really sad if that happens where we lose Hinch from the grid in 2020. But cross our fingers. And also, there was, before we go to break, uh, some late breaking news. Codemasters, via WTF1.com, Codemasters has agreed to continue to produce the F1 games until 2025 with a two-year option out to 2027. And Michael and I love the Codemasters F1 games. They've been incredible for helping bring people into the sport. We've got the new F1 eSports series going on. And Codemasters will get to continue growing those aims into the next decade or so. So, Oh, um, fat, fun fact about the Codemasters game. Right now, the patch has released that will switch Albon with Gasly. Nice. So, if you're up looking to uh, have some continuity in the season, that patch is now out. And also, uh, just to let you guys know, if you're doing a career mode with uh, without with the patch, it won't happen until the next until you do you start a new career mode. Just to let you guys know. Okay. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the second half of the Texas Two Step in NASCAR. And Joey Logano is not making a lot of friends. We'll explain <laughs> on the other side of this break here on the Extra Mile here on I Sports Radio, your direct feed for all. That is sports. What up, all you boxing fans? This is Vince Wright, the sports governor, and me and Gilbert Batista are the host of Ringside on IE Sports Radio. Make sure you keep it tuned to IE Sports Radio, Spreaker.com for the latest edition of Ringside. All the boxing news you need right here. Keep it tuned, Spreaker.com, IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, IE Sports Radio proudly brings to you it's intergender tag team champions of the world. Yes, I am Martin Sandoval. My co-host is Felicia, and we are the hosts of The Gorilla Position, live Saturday mornings, 8 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. We bring to you all the latest in news and rumors and opinions and perspectives on the world of professional wrestling. We bring you guys the latest in WWE, Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and including independent wrestling, such as Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, and here, VIP Wrestling, live from Texas. Yes, it is the Guerrilla Position, with myself, Martin Sandoval, and my co-host, Felicia, live on Spreaker.com and on iTunes. Attention all sports fans! If you're someone who wakes up each morning with a list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day, then you just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the college, and everything in between. This is me, your brother Larry B of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world, sports themselves, and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for The Defining Moment with me, your boy Larry B, every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there.
We're back here on the Extra Mile on iSports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. White flag segment of the show as we are getting ready to talk about NASCAR as they head into Texas this weekend. Before then, we're going to take a look back at Martinsville where they were at the for the first data 500, which was won by Martin Truex Jr. who utterly dominated that race. But all the conversation this week stemmed from an incident behind him where Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin got into it late in that race. Joey Logano ends up going into the wall, ends up getting a tire cut down, ends up finishing well back in that race. Denny Hamlin finished fourth. Actually, Joey Logano actually rallied back to finish eighth. Excuse me. They had words on the. They had words on pit lane, which suddenly turned into fisticuffs. Which during that, Hamlin ended up getting tossed to the ground by Logano's tire specialist. That individual got suspended a race, and that got us all talking about the etiquette of NASCAR race fights. And a lot of people have said, look, let them fight. Like, let them settle it out by the drivers. Nobody else steps in and basically, as we were saying, handle it like hockey, as Caitlin was saying during the break. When one driver hit, when someone hits the ground, then you break it up. But until then, you just let them go. Um... Caitlin, Michael, what do you guys think about the, uh, the the trend with the fights and all the team members just jumping in every time? I mean, well, I mean it's nice that they have their backs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like you need to hire a pit crew. As, like, you hire them for muscle, but apparently it's more than just lifting tires muscle. Yes. Yeah, they're like bodyguards at this point. <laughs> they, were, they really are. But maybe... They're trying to prove their worth for the fact that NASCAR is trying to get rid of them. And so maybe this is their way of reminding them that pit crews are necessary. Because if we didn't have pit crews, well, then look at all of these drivers that would have really uglier faces than they do already. Well, one issue that I see is with no? someone landing a punch basically getting suspended and with this being the playoffs the crews are trying to break it up before a punch actually gets landed well that's the funny part of it too if you think about it because it's not like it's not like football where you have a backup quarterback yeah you only have one driver only one driver counts for the championship so the teams have to jump in and break these fights up or else they're going to lose their championship driver in a chance at winning the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup. So that might need to be relaxed if you're going to let them do this because honestly, my thing is let the driver settle it. But at, on this other end of the token, every short track here in America has a rule where if you throw a punch you're automatically suspended a race. So we want things to be like the grassroots in so NASCAR. So what if they just slap them? Is a slap suspendable? If you make physically... Them, make them slap. If it says punch, you can get away with a slap. Well, it doesn't... Well, they make or sure... Or, like, hit somebody with a glove like they used to do in, like, the olden days in the movies. Well, I know the rules are leveled that if there's any physical contact in a aggressive manner you're automatically suspended a a race. So NASCAR would be in line with those short track rules everyone likes to idolize and say aren't as gimmicky until you actually, you know, examine short track rules. But I honestly think they just need to let them fight. I mean, you're just going to use the fight in the highlights for the next... 50 years anyway. How many times have we seen the Jeff Gordon fight yeah. with Brad Keselowski since 2014? It's infamous. Like, we see it every single year. 
when we get to this race. We even see it in the spring race. And this was in the... This incident happened in the fall. So if you're going to use these fights to market the sport, the drivers shouldn't be getting points penalties for it. Because I remember correctly, Jeff Gordon got a fine and a points penalty for that at the time, and so did Keselowski. No one should be getting penalized if you're just going to replay it five billion times. I'm here for it. Michael, what do you think? Should they be letting the fight? Yeah, I definitely think they should be allowed to fight this as long as there's no arm breaking or anything like that. Well, they also need to learn to fight because the last couple of tussles we've seen between drivers, it's, um... Look, I'm just going to say it's a good thing that they are not MMA fighters because none of them would last very long very long. It's a good thing that they're not in, like, sometimes the drivers like to remind me that while they're athletes, they're not very athletic. <laughs> well, their their job like, literally, is... Literally, I've seen better scrapping on high school cheerleaders. Well, maybe if they're allowed to fight, maybe they'll get better. I don't know. Who knows? But I think some we, of the wives would be able to fight better. Oh, goodness. Can we not? Cause that, that reminds me of back when Matt Kenseth's wife and Kurt Busch's then-girlfriend got into it at Texas after an incident, which I thought was weird, but it is what it is. So we're going into Texas this weekend for the, as I get the page up right now, this race will be on November 3rd. This race is going to be at 3 o'clock on, you can listen to it on PRN. This is the second race of the round of eight. This is usually the more subdued race because it is Texas. And that track has not had the best racing ever since they decided to repave it. But the AAA Texas 500, this used to be the race that Jimmy Johnson would win and then go on to win the play, win the championship. I don't think that race has the same mystique anymore. That race has kind of gone to Martinsville in terms of who wins the championship. But this race for the drivers in the back of the point standings for your, for Kevin Harvick and definitely for Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney, and definitely Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott. They need this race, especially Chase Elliott, who had the, for the second straight round, starts with mechanical issues. He has to win to get to the top four. He is 44 points back. He's got to win. And Chase has been strong, or we thought he was going to be strong after he won the Roval. But, Caitlin Michael, are you guys surprised that he's just fallen apart, it seems, since he won that race? <laughs> I yeah. think he suffers what some, like a lot of men, suffer from peaking too early. Jeez, Caitlin. <laughs> although I it, myself out now. <laughs> although it is accurate if you look at it, ever since he won that race, he got involved in the incidents in Talladega. Guess this one. He has mechanical dramas in Dover manages to back into the next round and then more mechanical dramas in Martinsville. Everything has gone wrong since winning that race. It's always been like a cursed race for him. And then meanwhile, Kyle Larson, who's 24 points back, Martinsville is just not a good track for him. It doesn't really agree with his driving style. He's good to come out of that race with only negative 24 back to the line, However, our negative, negative 24 points back to the leader, here's the problem. Texas is also not one of his good tracks. Larson is in trouble, no matter how you want to look at it. Like, he is, um, he's got to minimize the bleeding to just to get to Phoenix at this point. I 
I don't know if he's going to be able to, though. Unless he bought a lot of Band-Aids. Yeah. I just... I think Larson is not... Well, Larson's... I just don't think he's going to make the round of four. And if he's ever going to make the round of four, he's got to figure out how to way to be better at Martinsville in Texas. Because remember, next year, Martinsville becomes the decider for who goes to Phoenix to run for the championship. So he could be even in a worse situation if he gets to the final round of eight next season. But maybe they'll be better next season. Well, that's the hope. But the thing is, Chevy has decided that this is a fine time to bring in a new body when they're about to change entire car in 2021. I I don't get this decision, but it's up to them. So we will see what happens. Um, This race can be seen November 3rd and also be heard on USRN. Our own Matt White will be over there. I will actually be in Southern Maryland covering a race for my final project in one of my classes. So, unfortunately, I will not be able to make the race on uh, Sunday. But I will be there for the final two races of the season. Before we got to go, guys, we got to make some picks. We got Texas, two-stepping. We got Coda, and we got the Texas Motor Speedway. Who you got? Well, I can't pick Hamilton again. Mm-hmm. But I'm not. I'm going to go Leclerc. I, Ferrari. I'm going to go Verstappen this week. Michael, who you got? I almost did Verstappen, too. Michael, who you got? Uh, I said I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Hamilton. Okay. And for the Texas Motor Speedway, I'm going to take. I think Kevin Harvick is going to win his way into the round of four. Caitlin. Um. Mm. Kozlowski? I guess. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Michael, who you got? I'm going to go with I feel like that's a good pick. Kyle <laughs> Busch. <laughs> well, we will see how these picks work out this weekend. Remember, if you want to play Nearest the Win with us, just hashtag Nearest the Win with who you think <laughs> is going to win the race this weekend. The secret is, is I pick the people that I don't actually want to win. Because I do want to win. Hence Martin winning Martinsville. I didn't pick him to win. But can I point out the glorious, glorious nearest the win curse that is still upon us. Proof being Chase Elliott. Yes. Who both I and Matt picked to win. And he went down in a fiery flame of disaster. Sorry, Chase. I mean, I wasn't really sorry. Well, with that being said, it is time for us to wrap up another episode of The Extra Mile. Remember, listen to Caitlin's show, Not What It Seems, at 5 p.m. Comes on right before this one. My writings are WBGRnetwork.com. Lita's are at GPGirl.com. And Lita, we're still thinking about you, and you are still in our prayers. Hope to have you back on the show soon. Check out iesportsradio.com to get in touch with the iSports Radio community, read bios on the host, and listen to episodes. If you missed any episode of any iSports Radio show, remember you can hear it on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, the Spreaker Show Reel, and other places where podcasts can be heard. Also, keep it locked to our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, I'm at DK Junior 12. Michael's at Stargazer underscore FX. Caitlin's at Caitlin Seam. And Lita's at Lolita Camello if you want to get in touch with us during the week. However, that is the end of this episode of The Extra Mile here. For Caitlin and Michael, I'm Daryl. We will see you all at the next Green Flag. Good night, everybody. <laughs>